The sodium potassium ATPase is probably the most important active transporter in animal cells. It plays a role in maintaining the resting membrane potential, secondary active transport, cell volume regulation, signal transduction, and neuronal activity, just to name a few. It regulates these functions by establishing and maintaining the electrochemical gradient, which keeps intracellular potassium high and intracellular sodium low. Now, the sodium potassium ATPase consists of an alpha and beta subunit. The alpha subunit is responsible for the catalytic and transport activity, while the beta subunit is involved in the assembly and targeting of the pump to the proper membrane. Also, the sodium potassium ATPase transports sodium and potassium ions across the membrane against their concentration gradients by changing between the E1 and E2 conformational states, where the E1 conformational state is characterized as having the sodium and potassium binding sites exposed to the intracellular side. The E2 conformational state is characterized as having the sodium and potassium binding sites exposed to the extracellular side. Furthermore, these two conformational states are associated with eight distinct stages. Now, stage one is referred to as ATP bound E1 ATP state, which starts with an ATP bound to the alpha subunit in the E1 conformational state. Now, in this state, the sodium and potassium binding sites face the intracellular side, and the sodium sites have a high binding affinity. Now, stage two is referred to as the sodium bound ATP three sodium state. During this stage, the intracellular sodium ions enter and bind to the respective binding sites. Now, stage three is referred to as the occluded E1P three sodium state. Now, in this stage, the bound ATP molecule phosphorylates an aspartate residue on the alpha subunit, which promotes a conformational change that causes the sodium potassium ATPase to close or occlude the bound sodium ions from the intracellular and extracellular sides. Also, the loss of the phosphate from the ATP causes it to convert to an ADP, after which it disassociates from the sodium potassium ATPase. Now, stage four is referred to as the deocluded E2P three sodium state. In this stage, the sodium potassium ATPase undergoes another conformational change and shifts from the E1 to the E2 conformation, which means the sodium and potassium binding sites are now facing the extracellular side. Now, during stage four, the binding affinity for sodium decreases dramatically as it transitions into stage five, which is referred to as the empty E2P state. During stage five, the three sodium ions disassociate from their binding sites and enter into the extracellular side. As this occurs, the binding affinity for potassium increases as it transitions into stage six, which is referred to as the potassium bound E2P to potassium state. During this stage, two potassium ions bind to the respective sites, which also promotes the hydrolysis and release of the phosphate molecule from the aspartate residue. This in turn promotes the transition into stage seven, which is referred to as the occluded E2 to potassium state, during which the sodium potassium ATPase closes or occludes the sodium and potassium binding sites. After this point, it transitions into stage eight, which is referred to as the deocluded E1 ATP2 potassium state. Now stage eight starts as another ATP molecule binds the intracellular site of the alpha subunit, which causes a conformational change from the E2 state to the E1 state, where the sodium and potassium binding sites are now facing the intracellular site. At this stage, the binding affinity for potassium decreases and potassium ions enter the cell, after which the conformation of the sodium-potassium ATPase returns to stage one and is ready to repeat the cycle. So, from this we see that the sodium-potassium ATPase pumps three sodium ions out, two potassium ions into the cell, and uses one ATP to do so, giving it a stoichiometry of three sodium, two potassium.